What a great morning to be worshiping in the name of our Lord. Houston First uh, Church, we want to welcome you all. I'm just excited to be worshiping. Today is a, it's another Sunday. I don't know about you, but I was looking forward to this time. Uh, this is the time where you can actually go and invite, share this video with, with others so they can also be a part of this blessing and, and they can just rejoice and learn and hear what, what the Lord is, wants to speak into their lives as well. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just glad that you are watching and that you are ready. That you are, I, I, I know that, that every, every, everybody's just anxious to sing pray, uh, songs of praise and just to hear the message. Now let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, thank you for being good. Thank you for being awesome. Lord, we depend on you. We are glad and happy that we have you on our side, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross and for resurrecting for us, Lord. For giving us love beyond our imagination. For, for, for always being there for us, Lord. I pray for everybody that is watching uh, this, this, this worship service, that it, it, can, it can just minister their lives, Lord. But the, the, the friends that are also watching for the first time, Lord, maybe uh, that you will touch their souls and that you will just speak into their lives, Lord, as you are always speaking into our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for always being there for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, the first song is called Open Up the Heavens, Sing Loud. This is for the Lord. Don't worry about waking up the neighbors. They just need to hear this, this song of praise to the Lord. Here we go. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. 
plant gardens and eat what they produce. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. Now, this next song is called, Did You Feel the Mountains Tremble? And there's a lot of things that I, I just, whew, open up the doors and let the music sing. Like, sing loud for the Lord. This is for him. Here we go.
about you, but I'm having a blessed time just worshiping his name. And I get to be a part of this family. I'm just so glad and thankful for, for our worship team. Anybody from, from the careers at the door, whenever you come in, they have a big smile. They can, they can just, they just receive you with this awesome smile that it just helps the day, you know. And then we have the, 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 the everybody in the tech team working in the back to make all of this happen. What an amazing is to have people that are just willing to serve in that way. We also have people that are singing and playing instruments. And I'm blessed to have them, you know, and be a part of the Houston Church a family. This, is, this wouldn't be possible if they weren't here. And because they, they, they were uh, just willing to, to give their time to serve the Lord, all of this is happening. And I'm, I just want to thank everybody. Just, just, just say, guys, just thank you for everything that you're doing. And, and, and we have so much, so much more people, not only the ones that we have here right now, but everybody that works, the, the, the serves in the worship team. It's just, I'm blessed to have them be a part of this worship team. You have no idea how, how dependent on them I am. And it's just, I, I, every time that I see that, that, I, that I either text them or call them, hey, can, can you come in? They're like, always, oh, yeah, I can make that happen. I can, I, I can see what I can do. And I'm just blessed for their lives. Uh, let me pray for them. And as you are uh, over there in your house, just pray with me for, for their lives so that I can just give them the strength and everything that they need to keep them volunteering uh, in the worship team. Let's go to our prayer. Dear God, I'm honored to be working with people the, the, the have the heart of this of a disciple, Lord, that they just want to give their time to you, and, and no matter the, the how the weather is outside or, or, or things are, are happening around them, Lord, they're always just willing to to sing, to 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 to, to volunteer in the tag team, or, or to greet people as, as they are coming, Lord, and, and so much uh, volunteer positions that they develop. Uh, thank you, Lord, for for their lives. I I, I'm, I just pray that you will uh, bless them and, and, and them and their families, that they can just hear from you at all times. Lord, I, I, I'm thankful that they are part of the Houston First family and that they are you just giving everything that they have for you, Lord. It's, it's, it's awesome to have them by our side. In your name we pray. Amen. Woo! What amazing it is to be worshiping the name of the Lord. And if you have good company, like I do right now, I'm just, I'm just blessed that they are here. Uh, you know, sing, this next song is called Everlasting God. Uh, He's our everlasting God. And if you believe that, sing with us that this is for the Lord. Here we go.
you know, it's awesome to be worshiping the name of God and, and to be here together. I would say virtu either virtually or, or, or in person. Uh, one of the ways that you can actually uh, give uh, you, 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 your tithes and offerings, I, I know we have, uh, you know, things are changing, but you can go to hfcog.org slash give, and you can actually give online. You can select different funds, uh, and you will be blessed in the kingdom of God. Also, you can actually give by a check. Uh, you can just name it to Houston for Church of God, and you can send it to 14400 Norway Street in Houston, Texas, 7740. And again, there's different, there's different ways. I'm, I, I'm glad that you are uh, just tuning in uh, to do all of the things. Uh, actually, Pastor Tim is, is here. He's, he has a, a message for us. Open your heart for what the Lord has to say. I know, I, I know it's going to be amazing <laughs> to hear what the Lord has to say for us. Pastor Tim. Amen. Praise God. It is so good uh, to be with you today. And even if it is virtually, we praise God for the opportunity that we have to get into his word. Today we are going to continue our sermon series on freedom in conflict. And today we're going to we're going to look at that freedom in a little different way. See, what we've been talking about so far out of Matthew chapter 18 has been how is it that we deal with conflict among other believers? Like uh, if if we find that another believer has sinned against us, like like how do we how do we deal with that? How do we show them their sin? How do we show compassion to them in the midst of all of that? But I I have to imagine that over the last couple of weeks, you've probably been asking yourself, like, well, this is great and everything for believers, but what do I do with, with an unbeliever that I have conflict? Like, what do I do with my boss who doesn't believe in Jesus but is creating all kinds of conflict in my life? What do I, what do, I do with an unbelieving spouse? How do I, how do I uh, work through conflict in that way? Uh, maybe even a neighbor, well, maybe another family member. How is it that we handle conflict when only one individual is walking with Jesus. Uh, well, that's what we're going to talk about today. That's what we're going to try to, to hammer down on. And we're actually eventually going to come back to Matthew chapter 18, but we're going to start in Matthew chapter 26. So if you have your Bibles with you, I want to encourage you to go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 57 here in just a moment. Um, but, uh, but, but I want us to just have this idea and, and, and keep this in your mind as we are going through this today. Even the conflict that you find yourself in is an opportunity to bring freedom for other people. And I need you to hear that. I'm going to say that again because I, I need you to hear this. I need you to really, really let yourself receive this. Uh, because the enemy would have us believe otherwise. The enemy would have us to believe that, that conflict is, is just a, a, a situation in which we, we have to be victorious, right? We have to, we have to win. Our, our, our side has to come out on top. But I want you to know that God desires to work through our conflict, not only to bring us freedom, but to bring freedom to the people around us. With that in mind, pray with me. Lord God, I thank you so much for your faithfulness to be with us. I thank you, Lord, God, that you are here, that you are speaking into our lives even now. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, for the example of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that, 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 that you are in control, Lord, even in our conflict, God. We submit ourselves to you, Lord. I ask, Father, even right now, that your word would be proclaimed, God, that, that, that your word to be spoken through my mouth, that your message would be proclaimed right here, right now. God, we want to hear from you. We want to submit to you. We want to, we want to walk in obedience with you. Help us, God, that we would not just hear, but that we would obey your word today. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, well, let me uh, let, let's let's go ahead and, and jump into Matthew chapter 26. Uh, and I want to start in verse 57. And we're just going to take this a couple of verses at a time here. So let me let me kind of set this up here a little bit first. So um, Jesus uh, has the Last Supper with all of the disciples. They go from there and uh, they, they head out to uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. And eventually he is arrested. Once he is arrested, he is then taken before the Sanhedrin. Now the Sanhedrin is basically just a, a big word for uh, a group of Pharisees and teachers of the law. Basically this is where all of the, the religious 
leaders would get together and they would talk and they would try to figure out how it is they need to uh, uh, um, kind of tell other people how to, to live uh, the, the, a righteous life, how to live a godly life, right? So they all get together, and, and the whole point of them getting together is to be able to, to, to bring Jesus under judgment, right? And so when they get together here, uh, all they want to do is start conflict with Jesus. In fact, they've been starting conflict with Jesus for the last 25 chapters, but, but here, like, they are face-to-face, -face, right? Uh, they are the ones who sent for Jesus to be arrested, uh, and now they are face-to-face, -face and they are having to, they're, they're desiring to convict, quote-unquote, convict Jesus of crimes that obviously he has not committed, uh, yet uh, they are, are, are coming in very direct conflict with what Jesus has been doing and what, what he's been saying about who he is. In relation to God the Father. So, with that context said here, uh, let's start reading in verse 57 of Matthew chapter 26. It says, Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards. Uh, to see the outcome. Now, the first thing that I want to do here, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on each of these things, but I, I do think it's important for us to, to kind of just, just kind of hammer down on, on a few of these things. First of all, we need to recognize that, yes, Jesus was arrested, and so in some ways he, he kind of went against his will. Uh, but let's, let's just recognize here that Jesus only went with those that arrested him because he submitted himself to doing that. Um, what I recognize in this is that sometimes when someone else has conflict with you, you need to submit yourself to, 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 uh, to, to going with your accuser. You need to submit yourself to, to going with your accuser in order to have the conversations that are necessary. And this is why, and this is, this is so important, I really hope that you hear this now. It is so important for you to go with your accuser, even if what they're saying is false, even if what they're saying is a lie. It is so important for you to go with your accuser because God is there as well. See, this is the truth that we've got to make sure that we get in our minds and that we hold on to with our hearts here. Like, like when we go, when we're being confronted with the conflict, we're not outside of the will of God. We're not outside of the hand of God. We're not outside of the presence of God. God is still there even as we face our accuser, uh, our accuser. Even as we are looking eyeball to eyeball, God is still there. And this is so important. God is able to work even in that situation. The problem here is that many times we find ourselves in conflict with people. And what we do is we avoid them like a plague, right? Uh, well, that's a funny choice of words, seeing as we're in the midst of one right now, right? Uh, we're in the middle of this whole pandemic, and what do we do in order to make sure that we don't get sick, right? We avoid everybody so that, so that we don't get sick, that we don't come in contact and everything. And, and, and I get, like, if you're trying to avoid a virus, that's a really good idea, but if you're trying to overcome conflict, avoiding people doesn't resolve the conflict. All it does is allow the enemy to use our imagination to, 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 to allow everybody to have untruth in their minds, and then eventually all we do is continue to grow farther and farther apart. How in the world are are we going to be able to speak hope and truth and life and freedom into the lives of those that are not currently walking with Christ unless we submit and go with our accuser? Do you see why this is so important? We, we have to go with our accuser because God is there. God is speaking in that situation. God, God wants to move in there. And if, and if we can, can make sure that we are staying submitted to God's Holy Spirit, right? That we're not just trying to make this all about us. We're not, we're not uh, following after the desires of our flesh, but submitting to God's Holy Spirit. Like in that God can bring freedom, not just from the conflict, but can bring freedom in the life of the person, the accuser that is coming at you every day. Every opportunity is just that. It's an opportunity. I know we can be really afraid of conflict sometimes because 
Uh, we don't really know how it's going to go. There's a lot of questions. Is the other person going to get upset with us? Like, how are we doing? What are we going to do? Maybe, maybe we're going to say things that we really don't want to say. Maybe we're going to do things we really don't want to do. Maybe, maybe a big part of the reason we, we don't um, enter into to the actual conversation with, with uh, uh, conversations of conflict is because we're afraid that, that, that we're going to show ourselves to be uh, unholy and unrighteous. And we might do some things that would, would embarrass us in terms of our relationship with Jesus. I understand that. But, but if we never go with our accuser, we never have an opportunity to see God break down those walls in the midst of that conflict. These are opportunities that we have to bring freedom. And I believe that God allows some of this conflict to happen in our lives in order that we might be able to usher freedom into the lives of these people who need to hear about Jesus the most. Let me keep going here. Verse 59 says, the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find anything, though many uh, false witnesses came forward. Finally, uh, two came forward and declared, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. Um, this, th this may be the hardest thing that I have to say today. And that is that sometimes when we're dealing with conflict, the best thing we can do is say nothing at all. Sometimes when, when we're in the midst of a conflict, we, we just need to stop talking. And just listen. Um, it's interesting to me that um, Jesus remained silent through all of this. Yet, the, the Bible tells us here that uh, all kinds of accusers came forward. But it wasn't until these two guys that, that the, 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 the high priest even, even talked to Jesus. Like, all the other ones were so ridiculous. Like, Jesus didn't even have to say anything. And that's, that, I guess that's one of the things I want us to recognize, too, is that that if, if somebody has an accusation against you, if there's some sort of conflict that's there, and someone's making an accusation against you that is just ridiculous, many times you don't have to say anything. Like it will, it will be proved true. The truth will come out, even without you having to say a word. Again, it's important that you're there. It's important that you're present. It's important that you're listening. Sometimes, I think even with the um, the conflict that we experience uh, many times uh, it is our response to a conflict that actually causes that thing to grow and to just get out of control um, many times it is our response that makes the the accuser if you will the person that we, we have conflict with it is our response to that person to that situation uh, that actually um, makes the, the situation just go beyond what what the initial issue even was Sometimes I think if we would just stop talking long enough to listen, uh, we might be amazed at how much conflict could be resolved. Um, but again, this comes back to this idea that the goal is not to allow our flesh to just accomplish the, the desires that we have for ourselves. No, what we need to do is, is, is actually, actually listen uh, with the intent to bring freedom to others. Um, it does us no good to argue with people um, because sometimes all people want to do is argue. <laughs> and if all we're doing is arguing back and forth and no one's really listening, then, then there's no freedom in that. However, if we could dare to just be quiet enough to listen, to let the person we have conflict with get everything out, what, what might it feel like for them to know that they've been able to just let everything off their chest and you're still there and you're not yelling back and it's not all about you, but that you really do care for the person that you're in conflict with. What if, what if they were able to see that in you? What if it wasn't about right or wrong? What if it was just about you being present with that person? It just makes me wonder if, if that might actually catch their attention a lot more than yelling back at them would or telling them how wrong they are or giving them all the reasons for why you're so right. Jesus caught the attention of the entire Sanhedrin, and especially the high priest, just by saying nothing at all. 
Now, eventually he spoke, sure. But for a while, he was just listening. This makes me wonder, in the midst of our conflict, how that might help us as well. Moving on here, let me uh, pick up again with verse 63. It says, Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and come on the clouds of heaven. Oh, and coming on the clouds of heaven. When you are in conflict with someone else, particularly someone who's, who's not a believer, one of the things that is really important is to remind people of truth, right? Jesus did this in two ways here. One is he reflected back to the high priest what the high priest had said. Remember, his response was, you have said it is so, right? So one of the things that he did was he reflected, he reflected the truth back to the person that he was speaking to on what the high priest himself had said. The second thing that he did then was to speak truth about himself. See, um, we, you have heard the verse before that says that, that, that or the, 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 the saying before that, that the truth will set you free, right? Um, this is another example of that here, where, where Jesus is simply speaking truth back to the high priest. He's speaking truth about himself. It is very important when you're in the midst of conflict that you, you don't get lost just in how you are feeling. It is very, very important that you don't get, get lost uh, just in, in what you imagine might have been a, a motivation of somebody else. Sometimes we can assume that other people have an ill intent that may or may not actually be true. It is so important that when we are dealing with issues of conflict, particularly with those that are not believers, it is so important that we deal with truth. That we speak things back to people that they have spoken to us. That we make sure that they understand what they have said to us. That we speak truth about ourselves to them. Right? Uh, you, you've heard some things like it's really important to use I statements. And, and to talk about you know, how, how you are, are dealing with things and how you are seeing things. Those are all really important things here. These are, this is something that Jesus did. That when he spoke with the high priest... Um, he, he was reflecting back to him the truth the high priest spoke to him, but also the truth about himself. It's really important that when we're in conflict, we don't just let our emotions get the best of us and let anger take over to where we're just trying to attack the other person, but that we really allow ourselves to be centered in what is true, what has happened, what is said, what is true about you, and what is true about me. What is true about Jesus in this moment? What is true about the Holy Spirit in the midst of this conflict? What is true about God and the way that he is present even there? What is true in that moment? See, the devil will try to convince you of all kinds of things that are almost true. He'll try to convince you of all kinds of things that are half true. He'll try to convince you of all kinds of things that appear like they might be true. But what we need to do as believers in conflict with those who are not believers is we need to make sure that we are dealing with truth and truth alone. Let me finish up this section here by uh, uh, reading through uh, verses 65 through, through 68. It says, Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Now, this is a hard one here, um, because it, at this moment, it looks like Jesus is losing. Now, we, we can look at this situation and we can know, okay, like, like Jesus, we, we know that Jesus wins. We know he, he's, he's risen from the dead. We know that he's the Messiah. We know he's the Savior. Like, we know all these things, but, but in this moment, it looks like he's, he's losing the argument. It looks like he's not winning the conflict. Like, like, this is not right. Like, how in the world can Jesus be treated this way? Why would we allow this to happen, right? And, and what I want us to recognize in all this, again, is that if Jesus wanted it to stop, he could have. He could have stopped it in a moment. He could have said, he could have said, he probably could have just told one story and had everybody tuck their tail and leave out of that place. He could have. But what he did instead was submit to the right goal. 
See, um, winning the person, win, winning well, for Jesus, winning the world for the kingdom was the right goal. Winning that argument was not. <laughs> Church, we, we have to recognize that, particularly when we are in conflict with people who are not believers in Jesus, there is such a bigger picture than what we are dealing with right here. Like, like don't get me wrong. Like, I understand. Like, it's, it's important. Like, like well, nobody wants their reputation uh, diminished. Nobody wants to, to be looked down upon. Nobody wants other people to, to kind of think bad of them or anything like that. I, I get that. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I, I get it. But at the end of the day, like, there's a bigger, there's a bigger issue at store here. We have to ask ourselves, like, well, what is it that we're going to submit ourselves to? Are we, are we submitting ourselves to winning this argument no matter what? Because what if, what if no matter what means that that person that you're arguing with doesn't get saved? Now, I get it. Like, that person's got to be responsible for their own faith. But we've all had somebody share their testimony with us. We've all had somebody share Jesus with us. Why not you share your testimony with that person? Why couldn't God use you to bring freedom into that person's life? Wouldn't it be just like God? Wouldn't it be just like God to take a conflict in your life, to take someone that, that you are really struggling just to be in the same room with, wouldn't it be just like God to use that relationship as the relationship in which they're set free from sin and death, that that would be the relationship that ushers them into a relationship with Jesus, that that would be the relationship that, that ushers them into reconciliation with God and forgiveness and, and, and justification by faith through grace. Like, like, wouldn't that be just like God? And when we say that we're going to win this argument no matter what, we're submitting to the wrong goal. We've got to realize that that, that if the person we're talking to is not saved by grace through faith, there's a bigger goal at stake. Jesus was willing to die for that. Jesus was willing to be spit on for that. Jesus was embarrassed and humiliated and beaten and bloody and, 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 and given and treated like a criminal to the point of death. He did all of that because we were in conflict with him. He did all of that because there was a time when we decided that our sin was more important than him. He did all of that so that we could be set free, so that we could be redeemed, so that we could know forgiveness, so that we could, we could have this story that would say, even while I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. That person you're in conflict with, They've got bigger issues than the conflict you're dealing with. And wouldn't it be just like God to use you to speak into their life? I mentioned earlier I want to go back to Matthew chapter 18. And I would do that um, right now. Um, see, we've been looking at verses 15 uh, through 17 and, and, and everything. And, and, and it talks, it gives some real practical things on this, how you deal with conflict and everything. But, but I think it's interesting, like, this week and next week, we're going to look at some of the context around that. And, and if you look at the story right before verse 15, um, well, let me just let me read it for you here. This is uh, Matthew uh, chapter 18. And um, I'm going to uh, I, I want to read for you uh, starting verse verse 10. It says, see that you do not despise one of these little ones. This is this is a. Um, it's interesting, actually. So the disciples were having an argument about who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus brings over a little child and says, unless you become like a, a little one, you, you never enter my kingdom. Right? So he follows this up here, verse 10. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that, that their angels in heaven always see the face of my father in heaven. Verse 12. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away... Will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly, I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, your father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. But watch this now. Verse 15. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. And if they listen to you, you have won them over. Doesn't that sound familiar? 
Doesn't that sound a lot like the father? Doesn't that sound a lot like the shepherd going after the lost sheep? Doesn't that, doesn't that sound a lot like uh, someone who recognizes the bigger picture and is, is ready to, to, to help in, in, in bringing back one that is lost? See, as we are looking at this, this whole idea of conflict, we, we've got to recognize that there, there's a bigger thing going on here. It's, it's not just this one moment. It's not just this one problem. It's not just this one person. Like, like there's, there's a bigger issue at stake here, and it is a matter of life and death for all of eternity. Like, we need to recognize that this conflict is not just, am I going to win or am I going to lose? But this conflict is all about, is this person going to know who Jesus is when we get done? Is this person going to know that their sins can be forgiven? Is this person going to know that they can be redeemed by the blood of the lamb like is this person going to know that there is a, a heavenly father that is out there a shepherd that is looking for them that is longing for them that has left others behind in order that they might be found like, like in this conflict is god going to be able to bring freedom because that's the goal that's the goal and i hope as as you're dealing with the conflicts that you may find yourself in i hope that freedom is your goal as well I want to go ahead and invite the worship team to, to come on back up here. Um, I want to ask you, do you want to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? That's what, that's what the disciples were arguing about when Jesus brought a, a little one in front of them and said, unless you become like a little child, you'll never enter in. See, if, if we want to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven... What we have to do is we have to keep our right mind about the goals of the kingdom. we got to keep our right mind about what it is we're really trying to win. Remember, there in verse 15, it says, it says, If they listen to you, you have won them over. Not won them over to your argument, but won them over to the kingdom. Like, this is the goal. And conflict may actually be the setting, the environment in which God is desiring to bring freedom to the person that you are talking to. I want to encourage you to go after their souls. Not, not, to, not, not, not to crush their soul with your amazing arguments and, and, and incredible intellect and words. No, no, no. But rather to bring victory to their soul through relationship with Jesus. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you so much that you are present now. And that you are present even in our conflict. Lord, I, I thank you, God, for opportunities that you give us to be in conflict with those that are not walking with you right now. I thank you, God, for opportunities that we have to, to, to talk with those that, that do not currently walk with you, God. And I pray that even in those situations, Father, you would help us to live in such a way that people would wonder what's different about us. That people would wonder how it is that we could, we could be, be so different. God, I pray that you would give us opportunity to speak your good news, to proclaim your good news, to to give our testimony of how you've saved our lives, God. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to go after those that are lost and to abandon all else, even if it's a, a right now argument, God. Help us to abandon all else, that we would go after the one that is lost. Lead us, Lord, that you might bring freedom even in conflict. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I'm super excited today because we actually get to celebrate in baptism today with Brian Sori. And uh, so what I want to do right now is uh, we're going to be starting a live feed where he is going to be getting baptized right now, live in your house, in the baptismal. It's going to be awesome. And so as we sing this next song, I want to encourage you, flip on over to the live feed, and, uh, and we want to celebrate together what God is doing. God has gone and sought out Brian Sori, and he has been found. And so we're going to celebrate just like the shepherd where we're going to celebrate just like the father is. We're going to celebrate like the angels are because God has found another. Join us in our celebrating on Facebook Live even now. <laughs> 